putting waste in its place. So about me, my name is Arlie Flynn. I was born and raised in London, Ontario. I graduated from Dalhousie University with a Bachelor of Environmental Science focused in ecology with a minor in Ocean Sciences and Environmental Impact Assessment Certificate. Completed a postgraduate certificate at Niagara College in Ecosystem Restoration. After university, I worked as a gardener for the city of Halifax. Then I moved out west to Victoria, where I worked with Birds of Prey as a falconer. Currently, I work for a consulting firm in Kingston, Ontario. Fun fact about me is I never go anywhere without that Nalgene and my metal straw. So today we're going to be talking about waste management. What is waste management? Waste management is the solution to our growing waste problem. Proper waste management ensures that items are disposed of, reused, or recycled. There are many different forms of disposal for many different types of waste Canadians use and produce every day. Waste management is designed to reduce the amount of pollution, reduce human impacts, and create a healthy environment for all. So what is waste? Waste comes in very ma many different forms, from liquids, gases, agricultural waste, hazardous, organic, plastic, and paper waste. Liquid waste comes predominantly from three different sources, residential, commercial, and industrial. So wastewater, fats, grease, oils, storm water. Have you had a bath or a shower today? You've created wastewater. Once it's down the drain, you do not think of it again, but those soaps you use remain in the water and are added to our general system. Try buying environmentally friendly products. Dye your hair? That's okay, most people do, I do. Try and look for the salons that use environmentally friendly dyes, washes, and products. There are resources online to help you find these salons. Remember, anything that goes down the drain can have a negative impact on the ecosystem. So think before you pour things down. Gas waste comes mostly from burning fossil fuels, the exhaust from our cars, buses, trucks, trains, as well as the smokestacks from the power plants and other factories. Try to walk or bike or rollerblade. Cars, especially while idling, release harmful pollutants. Turn the car off while you're sitting on a train. These levels, though, have decreased around the world due to the COVID-19 lockdown. CNN has published some great articles uh, outlining the positive impacts from the, from the lockdown and outline how the pollution levels have decreased throughout the world. Agricultural waste. It comes from both crops and animal farms. The larger the farm, usually more waste is produced. Try supporting those small scale farmers and less factory farms. Now, agricultural waste normally is in the form of runoff. So it contains high levels of fertilizers, manures, carcasses, and debris from daily farming activities. This runoff can travel. Lake Erie as pictured has many different streams of pollutions coming in from two different countries. Water travels extremely far distances and it releases the contaminants as it goes. So again, think before you're adding anything to our water stream. In 2000, the city of Walkerton, Ontario's water source was contaminated from E. coli. The bacteria was traced back to an agricultural farm spreading manure on their crops. Research the city of Walkerton and the E. coli outbreak. It's very interesting to see how contaminated water caused such, er, such harmful human effects. Hazardous waste, so asbestos, leads, mercuries, cleaners, old medications, things like that. First off, they do not go down the drain. Read the labels when you're using these products and look for the disposal requirements. Always follow the label and wear the correct personal protection equipment. These products can have adverse effects to human and animals, as well as contaminate soils, gardens, and water sources. You should be disposed of at your local depots. Organic waste. So your wa yard waste from leaf litter, plants, trees, food waste from banana peels to meat bones, paper products, tissues, soiled pizza boxes, manure, and human waste. Small scale composting is your own backyard. Large scale is when your municipality collects it. See what your municipality allows. See what the guidelines are. Each municipality has different rules for what they accept. And things are compostable, but as soon as you use them for cleaning or you add chemicals to them, they are no longer compostable. Plastic waste. 
Plastic comes in many different forms, colors, shapes, and sizes, as well as numbers. We'll talk about that later. But think about the different forms of plastic bottles, salad containers, PVC piping. Some of these materials can be recycled, where others cannot. The thing about plastic is it doesn't break down. It only breaks down into smaller pieces. It never goes away. Paper recycling. It's one of the most commonly, commonly recycled uh, waste streams. It's derived fully from an organic material from the trees. So your paper, cardboard, newsprint, egg cartons, they're all different paper products at different stages of paper being recycled. When paper products are too heavily soiled, they can be composted as they are organically based. So now we'll talk about the different streams of waste management. Today we're going to talk about five different ones. Reuse, repurpose, recycle, compost, green bin, and landfill. The picture I'm showing here is Burns Bog out in BC. Bogs are significant um, environments as they do protect, protect the environment and they have a lot of good benefits such as water filtration, they provide habitat, they sequester a lot of carbon. So first is reuse. So containers that you buy food in can always be reused for more containers. You don't always have to go and spend money on those expensive sets. Your takeout containers, your butter, cream cheese, you know, um, salsa jars, especially those glass ones, they can be reused for lunches, leftovers, meal prepping, sharing food with family and friends. Repurpose. Things don't always have to be reused for what they once were. I have a few photos here showing of how I've repurposed things. The first photo is I made shelves out of my old table leaf. The second photo is I made a mailbox for my mother's Mother's Day present out of her old deck boards. Also my water ball is still present. <laughs> the next container, or next picture I should say, is I've used peanut butter, old Gatorade mix, ketchup bottles for different screws. They're really great for organizing things. And lastly, that last photo has little baby sunflowers growing in it. I have an old egg cart. Once, I, once those are big enough, I'm just going to rip those apart and kind of size them up from there. That egg cart will break down in the soil. Recycle. Watch this short video of me recycling and sorting my family's weekly recycling. Uh, it is fun. Sorting is key. And I give you a few tips. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Arlie. So I'm just going to quickly do a short video uh, showing how to recycle or how to sort based on the information I've given you throughout this presentation. So I'll quickly show you what we're going to be doing today. There's some paper, there's some plastics. I have two blue bins and I'm in London, Ontario currently and they sort it whereas paper goes in one, plastics, cans, aluminum, metals, they all go in another. So your municipality might have different regulations. Just check and look ahead. It's a quick Google, even a phone call. So we'll start with, I've got some cans in front of me. They've been rinsed out, you can see, and the labels are off. That's important. Those labels are paper. So that paper label can go into your paper recycling. Some berries. Again, you wanna make sure that little uh, bottom there, that's taken off, cause that's not uh, recyclable. So on your plastic containers, make sure that you can see the numbers. They're normally just on the bottom. It's probably hard to see, but they're just in the little corner. There's always a triangle around them. And so yeah, pull out the plastics. This came in the bottom of the cookie container. There is a little triangle on there, so this is recyclable. Again, check with your municipalities. See what they accept, see what they don't accept. We've got some butter tarts here. It's been rinsed out. There's no more crumbs left. The labels have been peeled off to the best of my ability. It's recyclable. Another can. Again, make sure it's cleaned out. As you're rinsing, feel free to just rinse all that water right into your compost. It's great. Water helps keep the stench down, keep everything packed. Glass jar. Labels off. Lid is off because the lid on this was a black uh, lid and black's not recyclable here in London, uh, even if it's numbered. So that's a good tip. Make sure you know those uh, little rules. This plastic bag from the wraps, there is a triangle on there. 
that one you might be able to see a little easier. There we are. So this will be recyclable. Little container top, recyclable. Orange juice, recyclable. It's been rinsed out. Lid was garbage. Again, a little container. Now this container has been rinsed out multiple times, uh, but be careful because if it wasn't rinsed out, it would not be recyclable due to the uh, items that were in it. So it would have been considered a hazardous waste if it wasn't cleaned out. This Jamison is a brown plastic. Brown plastic is recyclable. Some of the rules get confusing, but again, there's a nice little two on the bottom there. It's probably hard to see. There we are. So here's that lid for the salsa, not recyclable. Nice cottage cheese lid is recyclable. There's a two on the back there. Another little container. Barbecue sauce, lid's not recyclable. It's been rinsed out, labels off. Ice cream container. My dog loves to rinse this out for me. It's an outside trick. Muffins, berries. All these things, again, rinse them out. Try and remove the labels. Spinach. Chocolate chip cookies. You don't want those crumbs in there. You don't want anything to be contaminated in your recycling bin. Because therefore, sometimes your whole recycling bin will just go in the garbage and then all your sorting went to waste. So I got some now papers. It's important that boxes look like this and they're not still in box shape like that, it can get caught in conveyor belts, it can get stuck in the truck. Do your part, flatten the box, it takes 30 seconds. So papers, pamphlets, newspapers, little booklets, boxes of things, all into the paper. Little chippies, cookies, paper book, and those labels off of all your cans are paper. So this was a lamp. One of those cans must have been beans. Paper, strudels, because COVID, you need snacks. <laughs> all these flyers are recyclable. The edge of my egg carton. Currently my egg carton has little baby sunflowers growing in it, but this little edge right here is still paper, so that can be recycled. Again, flatten your boxes. It goes a long way. More newspaper. Uh, we did get a little snow in London this morning, so that things are a little damp, but they're not soaking wet, so they can still all be recycled. More labels. If they were overly wet, it would just be compostable into the green bin. Toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, still cardboard. Rip it, it's not a mixed pl uh, product. It's just cardboard, recyclable more recyclables now again here's another little brown bottle it's from the uh, vitamin D's again there's a two on it so this is recyclable the cap right here does also have a little number on the inside it might be hard to see but so I'm going to throw this into the recycling uh, as I was reading some of the larger or smaller caps if it's under three inches in diameter it can be recycled but depending on your municipality's conveyor belt, it falls through and ends up in the garbage anyways. But again, make sure it's rinsed out and cleaned out. It's not hard to do. This used to be um, breadcrumbs. So normally it's in a canister and there's a label on the cardboard. That's a mixed product, so it's not recyclable as is. The plastic top, which I can't seem to find, is in the plastic. The body gets ripped apart into the paper and bottom you're left with metal recyclable can lids recyclable again more cans sure that they're rinsed off pull that label off again labels are removed to the best of your abilities you don't need to be scrubbing them for hours these bottles during recycling processes are rinsed down they go through so many machines so those labels do come off eventually ah here was the body of the breadcrumbs see just those extra 30 seconds go a long way and it keeps something out of the garbage. So more comp or more recycling, sorry, more boxes. <laughs> uh, the other end, because I have two sets of sunflowers growing right now. <laughs> more paper, paper, uh, more labels. 
again, these are things that you're going to come across every day and you just want to make sure they're sorted right. Batteries. Batteries are tricky because the plastic covering covering them isn't uh, recyclable. But just pull apart, this guy's recyclable, and that plastic's garbage. Kleenex boxes, they are recyclable, but pull them apart. Normally you have that plastic liner right there where you pull the tissues through. Rip that off, that's garbage, but now you've got a fully recyclable box. Sunflowers again. More papers. We'll get back into some plastics. So another little cookie tray. Again, there is a number on the bottom and it says number one. Very commonly recycled. Spinach, another spinach. They have ones on them. OJ again, number one, rinsed out. This is my cat litter box, or it was. <laughs> Again, it's rinsed out, the label's off, and there is a two on the bottom, so it's recyclable. The Tim Hortons cup, the lid's also recyclable. Didn't have a plastic straw with it because those are only single use and they are not recyclable. A glass jar, jars, if you don't need to keep them, they are recyclable, but these make great little containers, especially with the lids on them. They're great for storing soups or hot beverages or gravies in them because they won't melt for the hot temperatures. You can micro... I don't know if you can microwave glass. Uh, plastic container. There is a one on the bottom. More plastics. Look for those numbers. Again, when you're shopping, look for the number. If you pick up a container it doesn't have a number on it, see if you can get that same item in a different packaging. More newspapers, lots of crosswords, more labels. This is the top of that Kleenex. It's still part cardboard, so you can still recycle that. The inside for these little Quaker oat, uh, oatmeal things. Feel inside. If there's a waxy cover, it's a mixed product and can't be recycled. This one, it's just paper. Give it a quick rip. If it rips that easily, you know it's just paper. More cardboard, paper, paper, more labels that have been ripped apart. Oil container, it's been rinsed out. Can't manage to get this label off, but that's okay. It's recyclable. More cans. Again, labels off, rinsed out. Now popsicle sticks, they are cardboard, right? It's just wood. So these can be recycled with your paper products. Little gum packet. The inside was garbage, but this is just cardboard. More labels. More of them. The dish soap. Now, the lid of the dish soap's not recyclable, but the body of the dish soap, once it's been rinsed out, is. Now beer can caps, or beer bottle caps, they're not recyclable because of, again, they're pretty small. But if you take them back to the beer store, they're set up to handle these things. So just keep those in the boxes with the bottles. These don't go in your blue bin. Now these little yogurt tubs I have here, there's quite a few of them. They're not cleaned out enough though, so I'm gonna take these inside, rinse them out before I add them to the blue bin. Same with this ketchup. There's a little bit too much left in it to call that clean, so I'm gonna rinse this out. Take a look at the lid. There's no number, so this lid will go garbage. More plastic. This is also from batteries. But again, there's no number on this, so this is not recyclable. This had a little label in here. That was paper, so I ripped it open, took out the paper. Uh, more cans. Your Starbucks cups are recyclable. Again, no plastic straws. I try and take the label off. Hopefully once COVID's over, we can go back to be using reusable mugs, but currently this is safest for everyone. So just make sure these cups go where they belong, okay? That's the biggest thing. Yeah, another cookie container. There's a little five on there, so it is recyclable here in London. So here it goes. And yeah, so we've got a few more cans, a few yogurt, yogurt containers to take inside and rinse out, some labels to go, this little lotion tube 
freebie from a hotel. It's empty and it has a number two on it. So I can recycle this. Everything's a little cold and wet here from this morning's snow. <laughs> Here's some more metal cans again. The cans are all unlabeled, all rinsed out. And I think that's everything. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation as much as I enjoyed uh, making it for you. And do your part. Enjoy sorting. It's not a bad thing to make sure that things are done correctly. Have fun with it. Make it a competition. Who can use the least amount of plastic or who can sort the fastest. Just have fun and enjoy. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the plastics. Plastics are numbered. Each number determines the type of plastic and helps with separating waste. Each municipality accepts different numbers. Check with your local guides and ensure you're following them correctly. Plastics 1 and 2 are most commonly recycled and accepted throughout Canada in any curbside program. Number 1, polyethylene terephthalate, pop bottles, water bottles, food packaging, liquor beer bottles. Number 2, high density polyethylene, detergents, bleach bottles, milk, motor oil, shampoo, butter containers, yogurt tubes, things like that. But ensure that they are rinsed and empty. Don't want to have them contaminated. Plastic number three, polyvinyl chloride. So the plastic pipes, toys, furnishings, um, piping, siding, windows. These plastics are recycled depending on municipalities. Check with your local one as these may not be accepted in your normal curbside program but accepted at a local depot. Number four, low density, poly low density polyethylene, plastic wrap, grocery bags, sandwich bags, freezer bags, bread bags, toothpa toothpaste tubes. These plastics are rarely recycled and are most often meant for the landfill. However, check with your municipality. When shopping, look for materials that are numbered one or two and avoid buying plastic number four. Look for toothpaste in plastic containers and shop at stores such as Lush where they try and use plastic usage to a minimum. Number five, polypropylene. Clothing, bottles, tubs, rope, medicine bottles, caps, straws. Number five can be recycled, but again, ensure they are rinsed out and cleaned. Plastic straws should be eliminated from your daily activities. Use a metal one or none at all, as these plastic straws can easily be picked up and blown around by the wind and end up in our waterways. They cause severe issues for wildlife, both onshore and offshore, and are mostly not recyclable. Number six is styrofoam. So the cups, the foam, the packaging peanuts. Styrofoam is mostly air and therefore is not accepted in most recycling programs. These materials easily break down into smaller pieces and can become airborne quite easily. When disposing of these, place these into a bag or something else to avoid them blowing all over your street. Some municipalities do accept styrofoam at recycling depots though, so keep a pile of them clean and when you get a chance, drop them off. Number seven, polycarbonate or other. So they're hard plastics from large water bottles, you know, the 10 liter pails, bulletproof materials, sunglasses, phones, computer cases, things like that are not normally recyclable. But again, check with your local municipality to see if these are recyclable at any programs or depots. Coffee cup lids and brittle lids from single-use cups do belong in the garbage. So now we're going to talk about paper. So mixed papers. Boxes should be broken down and stacked together as you saw in the video. Empty out pizza boxes. Food crumbs in those plastic toppers do not belong in paper recycling. Receipt paper is not recyclable. It belongs in the garbage. Try and avoid receipts altogether. A lot of stores are starting to offer email copies. Paper heavily soiled by food, like pizza boxes, can go into the green bin. Carbon is a great source for encouraging microorganisms and increasing the decaying process. More on paper recycling. This image really captures what you can and what you can't recycle in paper. Sorting paper and plastics is important as it affects your recycling abilities. An unsorted blue bin goes into the garbage. So now metals and aluminums. So items that can go into your curbside recycling bin are aluminum cans, metal lids and caps, 
uh, can and lid jars, clean and empty paint container containers with the lids off. Lids are also recyclable, but they should be off the can. Old paint cannot be recycled, so ensure the can is cleaned out and emptied. Seal and tin cans. Old jewelry, gold, silver, coins, broken and not, can be sold. These items do not belong in the garbage or the recycling. Barrels and drums, depending on what the contents were, these items should be dropped off at a landfill or cleaned, cut in half, and brought to a depot. Cast iron, pans, copper, bronze and brass, iron, steel, old keys, lead pipes, lead-based materials, metal sinks, fixtures, scrap metals, and wire hangers can all be dropped off at local scrap metal depots or they go to the landfills. Old pots and pans and old silverware should be donated if they're still usable or they go into the garbage. Old eyeglass frames, try donating them if they're not broken, if not they are garbage. But check with your municipality, see what the depots accept and see what donation programs are in place. Composting. So we're, firstly we're going to talk about the at home style. So these pictures are my family's at home backyard composting system. The little green bin stays in the kitchen with water in it so nothing sticks to the side and is emptied daily into the bins in the backyard. The left photo is the top of the compost. Peppers, strawberries, coffee grinds, eggshells are all visible. The right picture is the bottom of the compost. Good dark soil that has been created through the slow process of decomposition and is ready to be spread on the gardens once the spring weather comes and the snow leaves. Our house never smells of compost, does not bring mice and ants inside, and it really keeps our garbage bags light. Food waste in the garbage bag is heavy, causes a lot of odors throughout the house. The odd time I've seen a raccoon actually sitting on a compost bin eating outside, but he's outside and I'm inside, and vegetables are a good source for not only humans, but animals. Backyard composting can be expensive to start up, but it doesn't need to be. Use brown bags and keep them in the freezer until it's time for them to go outside. Depending on where you live, you might not even need a lid on your compost pile, or your compost pile may just be a box altogether. Look at the resources you have at home and see what you can create. Having an at-yard composting is also a great source of worms for the next time you want to go fishing. Avoid putting meat products in it though as it will attract large animals that you don't want roaming around in your backyard. So municipality style green bin. From PEI to Vancouver Island, many municipalities offer curbside green bins. Each municipality though does have different rules and accepts different things. Check with your local guide. Meat products are accepted in large sales systems. Soiled paper products can go in, leaf litter, other yard waste. Composting is a great way to reduce your total amount of garbage and to keep pests from ripping apart your garbage bags each week. So think though, compostable versus biodegradable. Items labeled as biodegradable do not always break down and are not accepted in composting programs. Biodegradable just means eventually it will break down into smaller pieces, but it not, might not all disappear. Composting though, or compostable items are, will fully break down and leave nothing behind. Know the difference in marketing strategies. Things could appear to be environmentally friendly, but in reality it's just in the advertising. People are paid to get you to buy certain products. Do your research and understand what you are buying and what you are consuming. Coffee cups, paper or mixed products. Tim Hortons, Starbucks, you know, Red Robins, all of those cups appear to be paper. But as they break down, you, the plastic liner in them is visible, as you can see in these photos. Single-use cups may be accepted in some curbside programs, but they are a mixed product. They have a plastic liner in them. You're best off to use a reusable mug. Single-use cups should not be an option, or at least should not be your first option. Those liners are going to last a lot longer than your medium double-double. And do not double cup. Double cupping just creates the double the waste and there's no positive benefit to it. The landfill. So your garbage pail should be the last place you put items. Think before you toss things aside. Most items can be reused, repurposed, or recycled. Landfills have capacities and can end up full. In those cases, they look for more land to convert into landfills, something that should not be our goals. Land, land surrounding landfills is also normally less expensive due to the increased pests from birds to large land mammals, increased truck traffic coming and going at all times, 
as well as strong odors and gases that leach from the garbage. These areas can also be have contaminated soil or groundwater. Animals and waste. Animals are negatively impacted by our waste and our daily lifestyles. Birds do not have a strong sense of smell and therefore they go after a lot of things red, as it could look like bloody meat. This results in birds swallowing razors, getting stuck in plastics or throwing out clothing, as well as ingesting plastics. The picture in, on the slide shows a bird's nest made more so out of plastic than leaves. It's sad to see plastic reusing, replacing natural items in animals' daily use, or everyday use, sorry. Nothing goes out the car window while driving. Nothing. While hiking, remove garbage. Don't add to it. Bottom line is don't litter, because an animal will pick that up or will ingest that plastic. It's all a cycle. Waste that is improperly disposed of can cause major problems in our world. Toxins and chemicals that leach from waste are absorbed by the soil. That soil is then used to grow our food. The picture you see here is a simple outline of how our soil and water systems can easily be contaminated by waste and pollution. Contaminated soil growing our food supply watered with contaminated water only produces contaminated food. So cigarette butts. So I did a little experiment at home, went outside and picked up a cigarette butt and put in a cup of water. Right away I could see the water starting to turn yellow. Cigarette butts are commonly flicked into rivers, garden beds, streets, and parks. These butts have harmful chemicals in them that leach into the surrounding soils and water. Cigarette butts can change the pH of the soil and cause the soil to be inhabitable. Trust me, I've experienced this work in gardening. One, sit, one bed was just the spot at a red light. It was filled with cigarette butts. That soil was the hardest to work with and it was the hardest to grow plants in. I was there daily watering, sometimes twice a day, whereas other beds I could water once a week. As well as these cigarette butts, birds and other small animals mistake them for food or nest building materials. Imagine a fish living in that water with the cigarette. How long do you think it takes for a river to become contaminated? Or how long do you think that fish would survive in a cup like that? It's just one cup and one butt, but think about the millions of cigarette butts that are thrown out daily that end up in our rivers, streams, lakes, oceans. Smoking is not a crime, but be sure the cigarette butt goes in its proper place, and that is a garbage can. Do not flick them or just toss them onto the road. The more we sort, the less ends up in the ocean. Waste management is not just for humans to increase the life of landfills and create jobs within municipalities. Waste management keeps waste out of the environment, protects all animals from ants and bees to orcas and phytoplankton. There are a lot of resources online outlining how many marine mammals and fish species die each year from ingesting plastic. Avoid single-use plastics. They will last for decades longer than the water or coffee you consumed in them. Plastic straws have been pulled from turtles' noses. They've been found in marine mammals' stomachs and found buried in coral reefs. At the end of the day, we need to think about our consumption and we need to work hard to reduce it. Thank you for paying attention and I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.